How many glad that you have a Father in heaven that is welcoming you to His presence at any time, any place? And that's one of the that's one of the privileges that we have as sons and daughters of God that we have a direct audience to our Father. I remember when uh, growing up in the house, one of the things that my dad, the policy that he had in the office for the church was, if we called at any time or we came at any time, that that he would drop everything and take our phone call or let us walk into the office. It, there was never a time that he was like pushing us out and saying, uh, I'm busy, you got to go do something else. Uh, that was my mom's job. <laughs> no, my mom was very inviting as well, but uh, our, our Heavenly Father is there for us. And, I, and one of the things for, um, oh, let's, let's read the scripture together. Um, if you would, this comes from John 15, verse 16. And let's read this together at the count of three. One, two, three. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. This is a powerful promise for every single one of us who are sons and daughters of God, that we have a direct audience with him, and whatever we pray, it says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. And so all across the island, Jesus even said, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. So before we start our message this morning, I want to join in a word of prayer, and we want to pray against the coronavirus and join with the United 714 all across the world. Corona is the word crown. And right now, there are governments, there are kings all over the world, kings of kingdoms, that are bowing to this virus. This virus has the rulership of the world, but there is a king that's greater than the coronavirus, and that's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. So you have the power at home to engage with your prayer. God's given you direct audience with him. And so as his children all over the island, would you bow your heads, close your eyes in prayer, and let Let's beseech our Heavenly Father uh, for, for uh, this virus to be torn into shreds. Let's, let's pray. God, we just thank you, Lord, as your children. We come before you this morning. We thank you that you have given us audience with you. And in the scripture, you said that we can ask anything in the name of Jesus and it will be given. You said that your house would be called a house of prayer for all nations. God, we declare this morning that that you are the king of kings, that you are the Lord of lords. And even though there are presidents and there are kings and there are kingdoms that are bowing their knee to this coronavirus, Lord, we, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would break, the, break this virus's crown, that you would destroy it. Lord, that your authority would be greater than the authority of this virus. Lord, we, we pray healing over the nations. We pray healing over, over our, our counties, over our cities, over our states and the nation. God, we thank you, Lord, that you said that perfect love casts out fear. Lord, we pray that your love that was made known through the, the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, that that love would, would permeate every single city, every single community in the name of Jesus, Lord, that that, that love that comes from your people, Lord, would, would eliminate and, and alleviate the fear that everyone has uh, in our communities, in their hearts. God, we pray your peace that passes understanding over every single community. And we ask this as your children. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Um, I want to get started. This, one of the, the, the great things about quarantine is, with one of the, the blessings of quarantine is that I have my whole family with me. And every morning we get together and we do devotions together and uh, this past week, they've been waking up a little bit later just because they've been sleeping in a little bit later. And so we've been getting up probably at 9 o'clock and doing our devotions together. One of the things that um, my youngest son, Asen, he, in the first couple weeks of quarantine, he got a word from the Lord from Proverbs, and it said that an uh, uh, angry woman, it's better to be on the corner of a rooftop than in the house of an angry woman. And so he, he wrote that scripture out, and, and his application was, I will not be in the house with an angry woman. <laughs> and so this became the house joke, not because Joss is, is, not because my wife is angry, but just anybody that gets irritated. And so whenever somebody starts raising their voice in our house, everybody else would say, rooftop, rooftop. 
and and that will kind of like you know put a joke in the house and, and everybody simmer down but God speaks even through our children and he's speaking through his word and I just want to encourage you if you haven't started doing daily devotions in the house your house should be called a house of prayer your house is a house of prayer and you can ask that the presence of God would permeate and fill your house every single day um, one of the things that that I wanted to talk about uh, this morning and this is just you know I just want to throw this out there uh, but there's a lot of fear that's just all over our community I don't know if you've been noticing just the, the the fear in people's eyes when you go out and that's all you can see is people's eyes because everyone's wearing a mask but if you get too close in Costco or you get too close in any grocery store you see everybody like panicking you can see the way that they're driving on the roads it's a whole lot more aggro than before and um, and I just want to throw out some statistics this isn't my opinion this is just uh, statistics of not the infection fatality rate or the uh, confirmed fatality rate this is the uh, the general population um, they call it the mortality rate of the entire population and uh, this is the most accurate number that you can can get for any virus but for this virus in particular um, there's places that have quarantined and places that have not in places that they have quarantined like Norway it's one person who dies out of 10,000 in Sweden a place where they did not quarantine it's two people who have died per every 10,000 in New York a place that is is a, a hot spot right now do you know how many people have died per 10,000 10 and that's a lot 10 10 <laughs> 10 uh, do you know how many people have died on Maui per 10,000 point three and so the statistics show that 0.3 per 10,000 people are in danger of dying on the island of Maui s thus far. Um, if you don't believe the word of the Lord, that he is your fortress, he is your protection, you could look at statistics and be believe statistics. If you don't want to believe statistics, I have a picture that I want to show you um, that confirms from the mouth of Jim Carrey uh, that you're probably not going to get it. So, Shalise, can you show that? Want to hear coronavirus joke? You probably won't get it. Get it? <laughs> All right, okay. So um, what I want to do to start off this morning's message is I want to do a, a reading of John. And this is lect, uh, Lectio Divina. Uh, what that is is the practice of the recitation of scripture. And as I recite the scripture, I want you to close your eyes. Don't fall asleep. I know you might be in your bed or you might be on the couch or whatnot. I want you to focus on the words that I, I'm, I'm reading from scripture. And this is coming from John 17, verse 20. Um, okay, wait, before I do that, sorry, let me backtrack. So this past week, we've gone through uh, Psalms 23. And I really enjoyed uh meeting with my dad and talking through the scriptures of Psalms 23. Every day we took a verse and just kind of expounded on that verse. And we invite you to, to join us. Psalms 23, the first part of Psalms 23, it talks about the goodness of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Uh, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And then it it, it in between the, the top and the bottom, he, and one of the things my dad says is the beginning and the ending of these psalms always carry the same, uh, the, the same theme. And then sometimes there's things in the middle. So, so it's all positive in the beginning. And then it gets dark. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So David is saying that, that even in a place of darkness, the thing that gives me the most comfort is being with you, is abiding with you. And then it goes into the, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And so he starts positive, he ends with, with destiny, with promise. And in the middle of that, there's, there's dark, the shadow of death, this dark part in the middle. And um, so we're going to jump into John uh, chapter 16. And the context of John chapter 16 is Jesus just had this amazing ministry, healing the sick, raising the dead, um, casting out demons, 
multiplying food, the multitudes following him. He's, he's gone into Jerusalem, and everybody's throwing the branches down and throwing their coats down, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, uh, glory to God in the highest. And, and so everybody is behind Jesus. And it's, it's almost like how we had last year. It was just a great year for the economy. Everything was going great. Our church paid off its mortgage. We, we, uh, we saw more people baptized in our church than ever before. And it was just this escalation of the goodness of God. It, the same way that Jesus had this, you know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters. And then all of a sudden, there's this moment where Jesus now is getting led to the cross and he knows what's before him. And, and as he's going into this dark moment, he's trying to prepare his disciples. And John 16 is him preparing them for this darkness. The same way that David said, Yea, though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The same way Jesus is saying, we're going to go through this dark spot. But in this dark spot, I want you to reflect on these words. Because there's a light that's coming. I love the video that Jake uh, put together. Uh, don't you think that was a powerful video? It, the, the 40 days is a, f is, is a mark of change and that there's goodness coming at the end of it. And so with that context, and, and you know the story of David. He ended up with uh, a kingdom that had no enemies. He defeated all his enemies. We know that Jesus, after the dark moment, that, that Jesus came out, resurrected, uh, King of kings, Lord of lords, ascended to the, the heavens. And so we have templates to look at in the past of what is past this dark moment that we are going through right now. And so I want to I wanna read, and if you would just close your eyes and meditate as I read John 15, and we're going to read verse 9 through 17, and he's talking and preparing his disciples for this dark moment. He knows he's going to the cross, and he says this. He says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give to you. These things I command you that you love one another. I want to go through the three promises that, that Jesus makes to every single person who's going through the shadow of death. One of the things that my father pointed out as we were talking was it's not death itself, it's the shadow of death. And for there to be a shadow, there has to be light casting upon that item for there to be a shadow on the other side. And us as believers, even in death, we know that death is not really death, that as we walk through the door of death, that on the other side of that is eternal life. So what is there to fear? And Jesus is saying, fear not. All through scripture, he says, fear not, for I have overcome the world. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. These things that I, I've said to you, that you may have peace, that in this world, there will be tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This is our Savior talking to us. And so I, I want you to have the faith to believe in the words of what Jesus Christ said. Yes, there is tribulation in the world, but he's overcome it. So these are the three promises. Number one, 
is joy. Even though we're in a shadow of death, even though there's this dark moment, Jesus promises joy. John 15, 11, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be, remain in you, and that your joy may be full. The second thing that is, is a promise to us in the darkness is, You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I've made known to you. So there's this theme of as we abide in Christ, as we abide with him, as we're plugged into the vine, that there's joy that's promised in that relationship. There's friendship that's promised as we abide. And the last thing that's promised as we abide is fruitfulness. Um, let's read the scripture together. You did not choose me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed you. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose when you were born. You didn't choose where you would be born. You're here on Maui during 2020, during this global scare of a pandemic, and you have been appointed by God. Why? You've been appointed by him. You've been anointed by him that you should go and bear fruit, that you should go. Let me just say, you should go, not stay. You don't need to stay in your house. Well, there's a lot of things that you can do now because the governor said you can go to the beach. You can exercise. You can go to the parks. He's opening some of the parks. So go. Get out of the house. It's good for your immune system to subject yourself to, to sunlight and all that kind of stuff. Go that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask in my Father's name, it will be given to you. Um, I, I just want to uh, illustrate this, that, that even in the darkness, if we obey God and we, we give of ourselves the way that he, he, he gave to, to us and gave his life, that's where we'll find joy, that's where we'll find his friendship, and that's where we'll find fruitfulness. Um, how do we abide in his love? So all of these things depend on abiding in his love. And that's the biggest question a lot of people ask. How do I abide in the love of God? And it's very simple. There's two things. We need to receive the love of God. And then how we receive that love. Greater love has no man than this, than a, a man laid down his life for his friend. The same way that we receive love, we need to give that love. And as we do, the power of God will flow through us. We'll experience joy because that's our purpose. We'll experience his friendship, and then we'll see fruitfulness come from our lives. So the first thing, practically, how do we receive his love? And we, we talked about this several weeks ago, but uh, the sacrament of communion is one of the ways that we receive the love of God. It says, he who eats my flesh, drinks my blood, abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead, but he who eats this bread will live forever. When we take communion and we participate in that sacrament, we reflect on this sacrificial love of God. We abide in his love, and we there's a confidence and uh, an absence of fear in that love. Because if God loves us that greatly, then there's nothing in this world that can take away from that. And then as we receive that love through the sacrament of communion, number two, it says, give what you have received. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. This is my commandment. So this is it, guys. This is the only thing that we do. We receive the love of God, but how do we practice the commandment? It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And so the challenge to us in an atmosphere of fear, is to let go of our lives, to live in a way that's sacrificial for the lives of others. And as we do that, the life of God fills us and ministers to the community. I want to show you a video this morning of 
of someone who allowed that to happen. He's a healthcare worker, and he's he. Uh, I saw this on on I think it was Mokihana's Facebook page. So shout out to Mokihana. But this is a great uh, illustration of somebody who faced death, is facing death, and is leaning on the Lord for his for his source. So we can watch this together. All the encouragement we can get. And um, I cried on the way over here, and I'm not here for the money. I don't care what anybody says. Um, if they took that check, I would still be here. Um, I'm riding this wave until it's over. Either I'm going to die of this coronavirus or I'm going to beat it. And um, I believe that God is, is real. And um, I just want to pray for encouragement because a lot of y'all look beat up, and we're getting whooped left and right, and people don't understand what we're going through. But I do, and God does. And so I just want to pray for encouragement real quick with you guys. Lord Jesus, we come to you today, God. We thank you, Lord, for our health, God. We ask you, Lord, that you touch our families, God. You touch our friends. You keep them close, God. Put a hedge of protection around our brothers and sisters, God. And, yes. and God, we know, God, that you're a healer and you're a deliverer, God. Amen. And we can do nothing without you, God. We are your children, God. And for those that are weak in the faith, God, we're those that are strong, lift them up, God. And just help us to be a support and encouragement, God. Then, Lord, walk with us tonight, God. Give us peace. Give us hope. Give us joy. God, give us laughter, God. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to cry. And, God, we've <laughs> cried long enough, Lord. And we ask you, God, right now, be with us. Be that right Rod and I staff that you promised us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, God. Be with us today, God. I feel your presence. I feel your spirit. We thank you for everything that you're doing. Give us that just that peace Amen. and that comfort, Lord. We love you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, God's called every single one of us to step out of our comfort zone to to lay down our life for our brother the same way that jesus laid down his life for us we receive that in communion but we we give that out to others and you might not have ever had a relationship with jesus and you might be in a place of fear even as you're watching this and i want to invite you uh, to to put your faith in christ i'm going to say a prayer and if you want the peace of god that that many christians are experiencing right now the invitation is open to you. It's not just to pastors. It's not just to doctors in, in uh, hospitals. It's open to anybody who will receive it. And so I'm going to say a prayer of salvation. If you want that peace of God in your life, if you want to know that the love uh, that surpasses understanding, the peace that surpasses understanding, then say this prayer with me this morning. Okay. Dear God, thank you that you love me so much, that you sent your only son. You said that you love the world so much that you sent your son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. And God, even though there is a virus and even though there, there is fear among many people, God, we thank you for your life being in us, that it's a shadow of death. It's not death itself because even in death, we enter into everlasting life as we believe in you. So God, I pray for every single person who is hearing the sound of my voice, every single person that wants a relationship with you, that you would show yourself real to them, even now in their living room, in their bedroom. God, that you would make yourself real and that you would give each person joy, that you would show each person that you're their friend and that you would make them fruitful outside of this season. And we thank you, Lord, for all of your promises in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.